to stand back so I won't be able to move it too much. Hopefully you can hear me well. Um, so hello, if you are watching, thank you for watching. Let me know where you're watching from. Today, I am going to be going over how to ADHD proof your life. So um, I, you know, sometimes I have ADHD and the other day I was just thinking, you know, like all these interventions that I have to do, it's kind of like parents that have to child proof their home. So um, that's how I feel with my ADHD that I have to child proof my life. Um, as always, this is not medical advice. This is uh, purely educational. If ADHD is interfering with your life significantly, and if you need medication, then go ahead and take it. There's no shame in that. Um, but this is just non-pharmacological interventions that can help with ADHD. So um, feel free to leave a comment if you have anything that helps you. Um, but the first thing that I'm going to uh, talk about is learn from your past mistakes. So for example, um, if you have a newer car, this may not apply to you, but I have an older car. So I've left the door not fully closed in my car. And then that overhead light stayed on all night and that completely drained my battery. So um, because I'm prone to doing being forgetful or things like that. I've completely turned off like the overhead light from my car so that even if I leave the door slightly open or not fully closed, it won't drain my battery. Uh, let's see. And um, another thing by learning from your past mistakes is that, for example, I always forget something when I go to yoga. Like, for example, if I if I was working and then I packed a bag to go straight from work to yoga. I would usually forget something. So um, what I have started doing is I in I have like an emergency bag in my car in case I forget something. And I've I even have like an extra yoga mat in my car. I have extra underwear, extra yoga pants, extra top, extra sports bra because I will forget something inevitably every time. It may not be every day, but it'll be like once a week or once every three weeks. So having like that extra pair of let's say it's underwear or a sports bra saves me from, oh my gosh, I forgot this. Now I can't work out for today. So always um, prepare ahead of time. Um, leave things that you need to take on top of your keys. So for example, let's say that you need to take a very important document um, with you to school or to work, or you need to take your insurance, something, leave it on top of your keys so that you can't forget it. Or you can go a step further and you can put it inside of your car um, again, so you don't forget it. So that there's no way you'll forget it because I can't tell you how many times I know I need something, a list or a document. And then if I don't do this, I will forget it. And like halfway there, I'm like, crap, I forgot this and this thing. Now, if it's safe, right, if like, let's say you park inside of a, if your own garage, if you don't feel safe doing this, then don't do it. Like if you feel like your car could get broken into, but leave things, for example, myself, or I've had students too, that they forgot to bring their ID badge to uh, clinicals, to school, and my ID badge doesn't open anything. So it's not like if it got stolen, it would open any doors that can't, you know, that are super confidential. Or, um, but so leave your badge or things you need to for work in your car if possible. And, um, this in, like hide it out of sight to prevent people from breaking in or whatever. So make sure it's safe or in the glove compartment and you lock it. But if it's in your car already, you're not going to spend the morning searching for it because that has happened before. Or like, where did I last put my badge? Where did I last see it? Next thing is set a timer for when you start cooking so you don't forget you left something on the stove. Again, being ADHD, you're forgetful um, and you start something and you get easily bored. So sometimes I will go to put something on the stove and I'm like, oh, this is going to take too long. Like, let me go just do something else real quick. And then I'll completely forget I had put something on the stove. But if you set a timer, uh, then you're less likely to forget when that rings, you'll know like, okay, it's been five minutes, it's been 10 minutes. So again, if you're watching, we're going over uh, ADHD tips, how to ADHD proof your life. The next tip is do a double check before submitting emails, closing doors, or sending homework. So just the other day, I was about 
to close my car door and I realized I had my keys inside of the car. Uh, so I, I'm in the habit now of like before I send an email, I will like triple check it before I submit any documentation or any patient documentation. Again, triple checking everything, triple checking emails because I'll forget a word here, I'll forget a word there, or I'll lock my keys in my car. So these are just small interventions that you can do to prevent you not having to lock your keys in your car. <laughs> um, use lists. If you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I love the character Amy in there. And she's like such a type A personality and she loves lists and I can just identify with her. So um, definitely use lists to keep you like you see that whiteboard I have back there. So I normally will write on there, but then I don't want everybody knowing my business. So I, I erased it for this live. But whatever helps you, if you need a planner, I have a planner here next to me. It helps me out more to write things down and see them physically like in my line of vision versus uh, electronics. Like ele I've noticed electronics don't work that well for me. This is a big one. Give yourself more time than you think you need. So having ADHD, we notoriously underestimate how much time we have um, and how long it's going to take us to get there. I have been in situations where I'm like, oh, I have enough time. I have enough time. And then again, I get easily distracted. I, you know, next thing I know, I'm like filing my nails and 20 minutes have gone by and I just completely like zoned out, lost track of time. And then I'm running late. So give yourself more time, do your best to stay on task. And what, if you have to be somewhere, like, let's say you have to be somewhere at nine in the morning, just tell yourself you have to be there by eight 30. And like, you have to be there by 8.30. Inevitably, you'll probably get there by 8.45, but that'll help keep you on track. And account also for like walking time. So sometimes I'll be like, oh, I have to get there at nine, but then you have to park, you have to walk. So that's why giving your, like telling yourself you're going to get there at least 30 minutes ahead of time and saying like, my appointment is at 8.30, not my appointment is at nine. I'm going to get there at 8.30. So it's okay if I, you know, if I'm a little late, no, like set that like your hard deadline. And that kind of feeds into this one, plan to be early and set up reminders. Make sure that you set up reminders, whether it's on your phone, on your planner, make it a habit of getting everywhere at least 30 minutes early. <clears throat> Again, I know this is easier said than done with ADHD, but it'll just save you so much stress and headaches. The next tip is learn to say no. We tend to be impulsive having ADHD. We can sometimes say yes to too many projects and then we get overwhelmed. We have a jam-packed schedule. Um, so saying no to certain commitments, it can improve your ability to accomplish tasks. It helps you keep social dates. For example, if you said yes to five people this week, you're not, you can't expect to go out five days, five nights this whole week, right? Um, especially if you're an introvert. So check your schedule first before agreeing to do something new. It's just say, you know what? I don't have my planner with me. Can I get back to you on that? It's okay to set limits and it's okay to say no. Another tip is deal with it now. And you can avoid forgetfulness, clutter, and procrastination by filing papers, cleaning up messes, or returning phone calls immediately. Not something in the future. If a task can be done in two minutes or less, do it on the spot rather than putting it off for later. So um, a lot of times I will forget to, for example, respond to an email or I thought I texted someone back, but I didn't because again, I didn't deal with it now. Or if, if you think you're going to remember, don't rely on your memory, write it down so that you remember to do it later if it takes something that's longer than two minutes. The next tip is to become a clock watcher. So again, just whether it's a watch in your house or on your wrist, just make sure that you're always checking your watch. Again, when you have, if you have ADHD, you know what it's like that time, just your perception of time is, is just so it, it's hard to describe, but you'll lose, you'll lose track of time easily. So you'll be on top, you'll be right, getting ready in the morning. And then next thing you know, something catches your attention. It's like that squirrel, something catches your attention. And next thing you know, for like the next 20 minutes, you're doing something that could be done later and you're completely engrossed in it. And then you realize like, oh my gosh, 20 minutes have passed. So be mindful. 
ask yourself, is this something that I can address later or does this need to be done now? And if it needs to be done now, give yourself time like, okay, I'm going to set a timer for myself. I'm going to address this for this many minutes and then I'm going to go back to getting ready so I can leave on time. You also want to uh, break up large projects into smaller tasks instead of doing one big daunting project. So instead of saying like, I'm going to clean the entire house today, just give yourself small tasks. Like today I'm going to clean one room, right? I'm going to clean my room. I'm going to clean the kitchen and you break it down even further. So let's say you're going to do um, the living room or the kitchen. Task one, collect dishes from the living room and place them in the kitchen sink. Task two, remove items that do not belong in the living room and place them in their, in where they belong in their homes. That's another thing too. I was listening to a audio book about how to be more organized. And the person in, in the book was saying how, or the author of the book was saying how give everything a home. So give your keys a home so that, you know, you're not just like, sometimes your keys are on your like table Sometimes they're in your room, like give your keys a home so that you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off every time you, you lose them. And then for example, like you, you continue with the list, you're going to do this, you're going to vacuum the carpet, you're going to wipe down tables, et cetera. And then in the kitchen, you would give yourself a different day if it's feasible, or you can take a break for an hour and then go back to cleaning. But if you set a timer for 10 to 15 minutes, tell yourself, I'm going to clean this for 10 to 15 minutes. Then when that's done, you get a sense of accomplishment, you stayed focused. And if you're tempted to not stay focused, you can just say like, okay, I only need to do this for 15 minutes. I can do this. So for those few minutes, keep your attention focused on getting that task done alone. And again, when the timer chimes, decide if you have the energy to continue on that task or if completed, start a new one for an additional 10 to 15 minutes. If you still, if you still feel motivated, reset the timer and continue working in short intervals for as long as you can. And the important thing is to just start. Don't rely on motivation for when you want to get started because sometimes once you start, it's, it's, it's like this just with exercise too. Like you don't want to work out necessarily, but once you start working out, you're like, okay, this isn't so bad. And now you've found that motivation that you were lacking. If you need to rest, that's okay. Stop the activity and try again later in the day. And then so that's the uh, commit to working for short amounts of time using a timer method. And then the last tip of the day is minimize distractions. For me, you know, some people like white noise. If you, if you can listen to white noise or classical music, whatever works for you. Um, but for example, if I am doing work, if I'm working and, um, notifications from my emails are coming in or chimes from whatever app you tend to use, whether it's TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, turn off those notifications because as having ADHD, we're not able to filter out noises as efficiently. Like everything is bombarding our senses. We're not able to just focus on what we're doing, on what we're doing. If we're super interested in something, we can have that super focus, but that's not always the case. So if, for example, I happen to work and my husband is home, right? I will wear earplugs because he may be watching TV or he just doing everyday noises distract me. So silence works best for me. So wear, e wear earplugs if you need to wear earplugs. Turn off notifications on your email so you're not typing and working and then you hear a ding, ding, ding. And then your curiosity is like, I wonder what I'm getting. Is it anything important? Do I need to check? Turn off phone notifications if you can, right? If you have children, I understand you may not be able to. When you have personal or professional work that requires a higher level of concentration, minimizing distractions can help you keep your focus for longer stretches of time, declutter and simplify your surroundings at home to remove distractions and improve focus. And again, having ADHD, we tend to just have a lot of clutter. That's something that I always am working on. Sim um, also, simplification helps at work. Improve your concentration by completing existing projects before starting new ones and adjust your work schedule if possible. Start work earlier in the day or stay later than usual when it's quieter at the office. So again, if that's possible, I know it's not always possible, especially if you're nursing, but if you have an office job or a work from home job, you can coordinate your schedule for when your children maybe are at school or they're sleeping, et cetera. 
So those are the tips for today. I hope that those were helpful. If you like this video, make sure that you drop a comment below, you hit the like button, you subscribe, you turn on the notifications. Let me know what kind of videos you would like to see more of. And if you're still watching, drop a little unicorn emoji just to let me know that you stay till the end. All right. Thanks and have a great day.